Hey folks, so today I'm going to talk a little bit about RSS feeds. I've been playing around with them on my website a little bit, and I'd like to basically demonstrate some of the stuff that I've been working on. So this is my website, it's chrisware.neocities.org. Now for those of you that don't know, neocities.org is a wonderful uh, way to build your own website from, like, by hand using HTML code. And in fact, I can actually get into... Uh, this is uh, one of the websites that I've got here, or one of the web pages that I've got here specifically, and it just allows you to actually build the uh, website, build your website from raw HTML code and CSS and all that kind of stuff. And uh, it's actually allowed uh, me to build a website that I really, you know, want not only in design, uh, in terms of aesthetic, as you can see here, but also in terms of the underlying code beneath it. It gives you full control, and it's a lot of fun. To, uh, to play around with. So for those of you that are looking to put together maybe just a little bit of a website to, uh, well here I, I, I sort of illustrate uh, various interesting apps and websites uh, that I've uh, made a collection of here. Um, there's you know some pretty useful information. Uh, I've also got some uh, Game of Thrones uh, notes where uh, actually there's a slightly different theme for that one but uh, you know it's uh, it's just where I sort of uh, jot down a few notes about what I think is going to happen towards the end of Game of Thrones for those of you that follow me extensively extensively will know that I'm a big Game of Thrones fan and I've also got some other uh, interesting uh, bits of information here but lately I've been trying to see if I can actually do something of a blog using just raw HTML code by actually designing and creating the blog uh, entirely by hand to see how difficult it would be, some of the challenges I'd have to face, and to see how it compares against using uh, blog CMSs, for example, WordPress being the most popular one. And I do use WordPress with some of the organizations that I work with, and uh, in many ways it's actually quite good. There are advantages to using a WordPress, for example, if I'm doing a WordPress website for an organization and I decide to leave that organization, I can just hand the credentials over to someone else who's capable of at basic website management and there shouldn't be too much of a problem there. Uh, however, getting someone else to, you know, um, be able to, to code HTML files and, and all the, uh, the stuff that's associated with that can be a little bit difficult. Now, nevertheless, I did want to see if doing a blog by hand using HTML code was feasible, if it was easy, um, and, and some of the challenges that might arise that I, I didn't foresee. I considered it a little bit of an experiment. So you can actually get it here. It's my code design blog. And there are a few differences um, that I've made here that you don't actually necessarily uh, get with other blogs. And I actually explain some of the decisions I've made in the blog itself. It's a little bit meta like that. Uh, one of the notable things that I've uh, I've done here is that I've actually put the blog in chronological order, whereas most blogs are in reverse chronological, or chronological order. And I decided that uh, specifically because it actually then tells the story of the evolution of the blog. You can just scroll down to the bottom. It's hardly difficult. And on phones, it's just really easy whatsoever. And then you actually uh, can actually find the latest post. Um, and I actually got the idea from another website that I actually managed for, um, for a local group. And they wanted a section that was a journal rather than a blog. They wanted to keep a record, tell a story of a particular project, but they didn't want to start at the end. They didn't want to have the latest post at the top. They actually wanted to have almost like a journal. And that's what we ended up referring it to is, is a journal where you have the beginning of the project at the very top of the page. And then as uh, the project developed, you would add more and more information further down the page. And it became a really quite an elegant way of telling a story. Uh, almost like a actual journal where you would write the beginnings of it on the first page and then move through it. And it became a very interesting way to tell a story. And it, it kind of got me rethinking about the idea of, of, of a blog. Um, because a blog can be any number of things, but it does come from web log, uh, which is not too distinct from the idea of a journal. Now, if the older stuff on your blog is no longer relevant, then I think that there's an argument in many cases for not even having it on there in the first place. And that's one of the things I like about static websites and actually about NeoCities itself is because you have to manage everything yourself by hand. You regularly have to ask yourself, is this valuable? Does this need to be here? Or is it just hanging around? Is it just getting in the way? And it's very good because the this way of website management uh, teaches you about Quant uh, quality over quantity. Now, I'm glad I got that one the right way around. Because 
it, it, it very much is the case with a lot of websites, and, and you find this with a lot of blogs, is that it becomes very easy just to dump content into it without really thinking about it in terms of its longe longevity. I mean, how many times have you had a problem with Linux or a tech problem in general? You've gone to Google uh, or used DuckDuckGo or SearchX for a solution. You've just used a web search to try and find a solution, and you come up against 10-year-old posts that, while incredibly well-intentioned and well-written and informative, you're not entirely... Uh, convinced that they're entirely useful because how much of your system is, um, you know, how how much how useful is ten year old information? And that's there is no you know universal answer for that. Some pieces of tech information can last uh, ten years. Sometimes they you know new software comes in to replace old software, new techniques come in to replace old techniques. You know, X might get replaced by Wayland, um, and and uh, you know. Uh, Ubuntu might change their desktop environment as they do and and all these things you know come and go and so it becomes incredibly impossible to assess the usefulness of dated information and that's why I like uh, static websites is because you are constantly reminded of the content that you are putting out there on, on the internet uh, and, and the stuff that is no longer applicable it becomes more practical to delete it it becomes better to prune the the website in general and uh, to manage it more effectively and actually if I look at my website uh, my website itself uh, so I can actually go to, I believe, my dashboard here. And for those of you that are wondering, I'm using the Epiphany browser. The entire website is 44.5 kilobytes, and you actually get given a one gigabyte um, allowance there. And these are these are just all of the files in the uh, that are associated with my website. It's a very very small website. And for those of you that are wondering, this Google um, file here is simply a verification file to make sure that I can associate this website with the uh, YouTube uh, account. And that's effectively what that is, for those of you that are wondering. Uh, it allows you to link across in a more convenient way and all that business. Uh, those of you that have worked with YouTube and Google and all that kind of stuff will, will be more familiar with it. But there you go. That is the basics of of my website. You can see all of the uh, all of the websites um, there and then, or all of the web pages there and then specifically. So anyway, I've got this blog here, and uh, I wanted to see whether or not managing code in and of itself, just by hand and, and developing this blog, it, 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 is it easy? Is it worthwhile? And managing websites and managing blogs um, and and like news websites with uh, WordPress, it's not like a gimme. It's not like everything's automated. Whenever you put up a post, you have to select its categories. You have to add in all the metadata and the featured images and all this kind of stuff. So, and and, and it got me thinking as well, just, you know, sticking on a few lines of code is really just as quick as making sure that you go through the checklist of all the things that your post has to adhere to before it can even be published. So, I have found that in quite in the majority of cases, that just working on a website with the HTML code itself, providing you design it accordingly and providing um, that you, you know, you, you're just a bit careful with how code is organized and how it is all structured, can become a substantially more efficient and effective way of producing content on the internet. Not to mention, of course, that it's 44.5 kilobytes when your average front page of a news website is more like four megabytes you know it's this is you know there's a magnitude difference here and i've decided to have no images on my website um partly to like increase the speed and partly to to be efficient but then also partly because there is no real requirement for images this website here it's designed to convey a little bit of information, have a little bit of fun, of course, in the Game of Thrones section here, to provide links to my social media and all that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, like, I mean, I pr primarily started it because I wanted a list of useful, uh, you know, open source apps, or primarily open source apps, maybe a few open source games there, and uh, and to keep it updated and to uh, to be able to provide it to anyone that is actually looking for a, a good open source tool for a particular job that needs doing. Uh, I've also got a, f a couple of uh, tutorials here as well, um, and partly there for myself, just to make sure that they're in a place where I know they are. So it's a little bit of a scrapbook, but it's also uh, useful to other people. Other people have, have told me that they found it useful, particularly the the application list. So anyway, I'm uh, uh, I'm, I'm rambling a little bit here, but I do have to say, so far, uh, this blog is very, very, very easy to. Um, uh, to maintain so far. Now, each of these posts, it's not just one long solid, well, it is one long solid file, but I've also ID'd each of the titles 
so that you can uh, then copy the link address or you can actually refer to the link address and as you can see up here the uh, article titled the web blog experiment is now uh, designed html ha um, hash blog hyphen experiment so each of these posts do have their own url so it's not necessarily like it's an entire dump of information but the idea is that this um this blog this website this journal it gets updated on average so much twice a year now it'll probably be updated a few more times this year but really it's not going to be an incredibly heavily updated blog which means the amount of code on it is going to be very very manageable so so far uh, i must admit uh, when it comes to just a little bit of a personal blog then um this or a, li a little bit of uh, my musings this definitely does seem to be so far uh, an effective and efficient way of doing it. And also, when it comes to static websites like this, when it comes to managing uh, it with ne NeoCities, it becomes a lot more practical to have different blogs or different uh, web pages associated with different subject matter so that uh, you don't necessarily have this huge dump of information that most blogs tend to be with lots of different scattered ideas but rather it tends to be a little bit more pruned a little bit a little bit more specific and and all of these things so if i wanted to do a blog where i talked uh, about something entirely different stamp collecting for example then i would just have an entirely different uh, page on the site which then you know it doesn't necessarily mean that i have to set up an entirely new blog it's just a part of this one but at the same time it's also not going to get conflated with my code design blog so it's a nice way of managing information in a very specific way in the way that i want to do it uh, using very little overheads like i say the the website itself is less than 45 kilobytes it'll grow a little bit over time but it's really not going to ever break 100 uh it's not going to break a megabyte i would be very surprised if uh, this website carrying on its course ever makes it above a megabyte and even then it's not like everyone's going to view all of the content on that website at that time so anyway uh the reason that I'm talking about this uh, blog today, because I'm still working out, and actually just as a bit of a side note, uh, the NeoCities code editor, the NeoCities HTML editor, is really quite good in a way, because I've got the, uh, the four articles associated with the website, but you can actually, because of the, the they're within article tags, it means that uh, I can then just like uh, show and hide as and when I feel it's, you know, as and when I want to edit it. So this website here, the design.html website, which is this website, can actually be, the code can be uh, sort of viewed in an incredibly versatile way here, uh, making it very, very easy to, when I'm working around the content or when I'm actually working specifically with the content, I can just close up the head tag, for example. So that is a really nice thing with that you can do with the NeoCities code editor. And I don't think you can do it with a lot of the others. I don't know if you can do it. If you can do it with Gedit or you can do it with Pluma, please let me know in, in the comment section below because I would love to have this. This feature is amazing for, for HTML editing. Um, but there you go. So. One of the things that I thought might be a problem with this blog, and I do actually talk a little bit about it uh, in the, th I think, yeah, it's the third, uh, here we go, weakness, lack of RSS. So the other day I thought, well, how easy is it? What are the challenges associated with actually coding up the RSS feed by hand? What if I wanted to actually just make an RSS feed by hand for this particular page? So I, uh, I uh, searched around. And I came across this tutorial. This tutorial is rss-tutorial.com. Uh, and it's got uh, a whole bunch of reasonably useful information, actually, about RSS in quite a broad capacity. But specifically, code and RSS feed. And it gave some basic parameters as to what an RSS feed looks like. And uh, it gives you examples along the way. This is a re It was a really accessible tutorial that really got me uh, started on this. But this here is an example of a three item RSS feed, as you can see all the, you know, the, well, you can see the three items here. And whereas that is a very, very bare bones RSS feed, that is easily manageable by hand. In fact, more so than with, uh, than I was expecting. And it's actually probably more manageable than actually managing the code on the blog itself. Uh, so I actually got, uh, I, 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 I drafted out what I thought my uh, equivalent would be. Uh, and I think I've got it here. What have I got? Yeah, here we go. And this is 
uh, what I came up with. The I've got the four articles here, and I've also got some of the descriptive elements, and I've also uh, done a few other things as well. For example, this here is uh, for the benefit. This um, XMLNS little tag here is specifically for uh, the uh, w uh, World Wide Web Consortium's verif uh, validation process, uh, and there's a few things here. So, uh, but it's really quite a simple set of tags that. Um, the, or, that you can do. And all, all I've got to do is if I had an, another item that I added to the bottom of the, uh, I wanted to add to the bottom of the feed, I would just press Alt, Shift, and Down, and then it would just clone the item, and then I would change the date, I would change the time, I would change the GUID, which is, uh, the GUID is very simply a unique identifier, and that makes sure that if you do make an adjustment to each of the feeds, uh, within the RSS feed that it doesn't then um, duplicate, for example. So it's uh, it just makes makes sure that each uh, I you know it, it gives an ID to each of the posts that you make, and that can be useful. Uh, and uh, and I know it was recommended that I did that as part of the W3C validation uh, process. But really, all I've got is for each of the items, I've got the title, the publication date, a unique ID, the link to it, of course and the description, which is basically going to be the first sentence of each of the posts. Really, all I want from this RSS feed is for anyone who cares to sign up to it using the RSS re or using their RSS reader of choice, just gets notified when there is a new addition to the, uh, the blog, the journal. And I know that some people uh, tend to or very much prefer, including myself, to have the full content in the description tags. That then becomes a little bit more difficult. And if I do want to then make an adjustment in the HTML portion of the blog, I then have to make sure that it's it's uh, that I make the same adjustment in RSS, which does specifically mean doubling the work in a lot of cases. It also does make the code significantly more ungainly as well. Uh, but that being said, so so it's not it's not perfect. It's not exactly how I want it, but it's a lot better than not having an RSS feed at all. Now, when it comes to NeoCities, I did actually have to make one significant compromise here, and that was that I had to call it design.rss.txt because the the um, the free plan of NeoCities uh, only allows you to have certain file type extensions. But because I've set all the um, the the parameters of the RSS feed itself uh, in the file, um, it is it should be for the most part okay. Now, if those of you uh, watching this decide to try out the RSS feed, there's not necessarily a specific reason why you should. It's very easy just to come across to the blog itself and and read over. This is not the kind of blog that you really need to subscribe to with an RSS feed. It's almost designed to be read in its entirety and then moved on. It's a little bit like a a, a book that's a work in progress, although calling this any kind of literature is, is, is really... Uh, overdoing it if you ask me this is just this is just the ramblings of a madman if we're honest <laughs> but uh, with that being said uh, if any of you guys do have any problems uh, picking this up in your RSS reader then please let me know now what I did is uh, I've so I've got the RSS this is the RSS feed itself and uh, I uh, designated the RSS feed for the page in the top here and this is it so what I can do is if I go to the blog itself, all I need to do is, is select the URL of the blog. Then I can pull up something in Liferia. I can then do a new subscription, paste that into the subscription. There we go. Oops. So it's just, there we go. So what I, what I, want, what I wanted to do was to specifically have just the blog title right at the top there and then copy that across. And that's what we've got here chrisware.neocities.org forward slash design.html. Click OK. And there you go. So you don't actually need to put the RSS feed itself because the website points directly to the RSS feed. Um, then you can just put the website in and then it picks it up quite straightforwardly. Now, not all websites necessarily do this. For example, each YouTube channel has an RSS feed associated with it, but it's not declared within the YouTube channel itself. You have to go out and find it and it can be a little bit of a pain. Fortunately enough, I have a tutorial on how to do that, which is pretty neat. So uh, if you're interested in using uh, an RSS reader to pick up YouTube channels, then uh, then yeah, you can check out the website there. Um, so anyway, back to the blog. 
Um, yeah, and then it's just pulled down the four articles, and then you can you can see that it's only got the description down here. It's got the dates on the right hand side, and then you can just simply double click on uh, on the thing in question, and then you'll get sent to the relevant uh, blog item. So there you go, and it's all done by hand, all done entirely by hand, which is uh, is quite nice. And uh, what I did as well, just to uh, just to to finish the deed. I went to the W3C feed validation service and uh, made sure that uh, it's all okay. Now, it does say congratulations, this is a valid RSS feed, and it does give the recommendation that I don't use the TXT file extension uh, because it can be interpreted as plain text. So that is a bit of a shortcoming of the feed itself. It's a limitation of the NeoCities um, uh, editor, but... Um, I think that it works in our uh, in Liferia, so I'm hoping that it's going to work across the board on other uh, feed readers um, that are used. And there you go; it gives the source of the items that it can uh, can pick up. It also makes the RSS file um, significantly smaller in file size as well for the uh, for the larger of the uh, for, for larger feeds as well. So there we go. Uh, that's uh, I'll make sure to put a link to this RSS tutorial down in the description below. Uh, it's you know it's really well put together and uh, it, it basically it made me feel like this that that coding an RSS feed by hand was approachable and that's what the best tutorials in my opinion do is that not only do they give you the information required but they also present it in such a way that it makes the task. Uh, doable, like it doesn't overwhelm you with information, it doesn't make it, you know, it doesn't lay out a task in a complex manner or anything like that. It actually, you know, gives you a good step-by-step -step instruction into how to, to overcome a particular problem. And, and, and uh, I think there is very much an art to writing good tutorials, good documentation, and, um, and I think this one, uh, at least for me, it made me. It made a very, uh, it, you know, it made a task that I found particularly intimidating uh, look perfectly achievable and i think that's that is a credit to uh to the to to the author here so there we go um this is this is a little bit of uh, of a ramble in terms of my neo cities website uh, feel free to check out the blog in question it largely talks about the ideas of keeping things simple and straightforward especially when it comes to html not only are websites these days they use an ungodly amount of ram they they use huge images and take a vast amount more bandwidth than are required when really what you want to do is uh, convey just reasonably straightforward information and that's what my website tries to do my website tries to be the antithesis of so much that you see online when it comes to web design it's just nice it's compact it's lightweight and it looks the same on any device whether or not you're uh, viewing it on a desktop computer whether or not you're viewing it on a phone or a tablet and you know what if you've got a visual impairment you can just press you can zoom in and it makes the website you know just as uh, you know you can you can you can increase the size of the text you can even go into the blog here and look at that if you you know you can you can you can really zoom in and you can you can take a good look at uh, at the text it it's a very uh responsive design and it works on you know no matter what your screen size is no matter what your version of the browser is it's just pure html css with an rs uh, rss feed tagged on and it's to me it's a good demonstration of why it's worth keeping things simple from time to time because you know we can we can massively overcomplicate solutions we can use big and clunky cmss that take up more resources than are required that are sometimes more difficult to maintain than uh th than you really want them to be as well this is very easy to maintain and it's very straightforward to um to to review and to take out information that becomes dated and um and out of date and unusable um, and it really does allow me to take a good critical look at the content that i put out there and to uh to assess the quality of it rather than just like many blogs that you see these days where people just feel compelled to put out you know a post a month or a post a week or anything like that um and perhaps this website in a way is is my attempt to to craft something that I really, really, you know, want to see more of in the web um, because I know that, like, for example, there, you know, the irony of this YouTube blog is not lost on me where I, I update it regularly and um, and I don't think about the content that I've necessarily posted two or three or four years ago. Um, and uh, And this to me is 
perhaps a way of address addressing the criticisms that I have towards myself towards this channel into uh, a new medium which um, which I uh, I'm really quite fond of and you know this is just a good example of a lot of the ethos that I've come to develop these days of just keeping things simple you know it's it's easier to fix when they get broken they break less often it's more accessible to more people um, you know look at the contrast here and just to ramble on a little bit more about the design, some of you may notice that the de design does change over time. I've recently gone to putting uh, underline, underlining the hyperlink text again. And I was reading an article about brutalist web design, talking about how it really is good design to have your links underlined. It is the universal declaration that a link is able to be clicked on, that a piece of text is able to be clicked on. Because if you are on, for example, a mobile browser, uh, you do not have the ability to hover over a piece of text to see if it is uh, a hyperlink text or just a different color. And whereas I, c I did and could get away with just having the text as a starkly different color as the green here, that's not necessarily the case in all circumstances under all color schemes. It's, it's obvious here when I've got, you know, uh, white text on a very dark gray background, but the, the text is the, you know, it's the accented color. But if I go back to, for, if I go to, for example, my Game of Thrones website, where the colors are a little bit more subtle, I guess, or where the color scheme is less stark, uh, you can, um, uh, for example, this uh, scrawlings from the uh, from the black cells here, which links to a uh, a wiki page. Um, if this didn't have the under, if this wasn't underlined, it might not necessarily be as starkly clear that you could click on this text. It might be, you know, in fact, to be honest, if you are reading it or scanning it very quickly, you might not even have noticed that it's a link because the color, the grey color here and the beige color of the text, they're not massively, you know, contrasting. So it might it might just be a you know people might consider it a stylistic design um, and it might not necessarily be as obvious and that's the idea with good web design is that you want the structure of it you want the navigation of it you want the design of it to be uh, incredibly obvious you don't want people to have to think about things too much I know that there is this idea you specifically see it with YouTube where they do change around their buttons and their designs and their layout almost on a yearly basis it seems and the cynic in me says that this is so that you don't grow too comfortable with the design of the website, so that you are forced to pay attention, so that you're forced to look at all parts of the screen, even though over time your mind has adjusted to pay more attention to the particular parts uh, and, and to pay less attention to the stuff that you don't find particularly interesting. When YouTube uh, rearranges their content from time to time, you're forced to then uh, pay more attention and use more brain power to focus on the website. You often see it in supermarkets where from time to time they'll rearrange the shopping aisles so people don't grow too comfortable with knowing where you know the cheaper items are or where the best deals are or where the things that they usually want to eat are. You know, supermarkets will mix things up from time to time as a deliberate method so that people will have to go around the stores paying more attention to things that they wouldn't usually pay attention to. It's all about the process of, of manipulating, you know, how the mind works. And to me, I just want to make sure that the content is as easily available as possible, that it's as easily readable as possible. And you may even notice, of course, when I go into the code design blog, that I've actually narrowed the text a lot because it does make it easier to read from left to right. Now, I don't want to over-engineer the style on all of this um, because... Uh, then you start getting into the realms of, well, sometimes the style doesn't look the same on mobiles as it does on desktops and all that kind of thing. And I want to have a consistent design as possible. But uh, when it comes to trying to make um, text as readable as possible, there are some compromises that you can make. And this is only a max width. So if I were to really zoom in a lot, oh, that's the most I can zoom in. Uh, it will act, it, it won't actually expand beyond the sides of the screen it will um, it will actually narrow so you you in theory should never have to scroll left to right that is something that usually is um, pretty bad design at least in my opinion when you when you're working on a website if you have to scroll from left to right I, I think there is a failure of design there like websites should be a you know a one-dimensional um, media entity but that's that's just my uh, my uh, opinion on the uh, on the situation. I know, for example, that Twitch, the Twitch dashboard, if any of you guys have ever streamed, uh, does scroll left to right. And I do find that to be quite jarring and irritating. I know others do too. There are better ways to display information in, in that 
in that way. Uh, and, and uh, you know, it coincides with mouse wheels and all that kind of stuff. So there we go. And I do talk a little bit more, uh, if I haven't spoken already on the subject enough, a little bit about the the benefits of, of simplicity of, of code. You know, there's text-to-speech, text-only browsers, braille terminals, all this kind of stuff that find it easier to... Um, to portray the information on these kind of text websites. This website would look pretty good in a text-only browser, for example. It uh, it works just as well when JavaScript is disabled than when JavaScript is enabled. There's no JavaScript on this website, so... Um, and it lo look how quickly it loads. Like, it just, you know, boom, boom, Game of Thrones. I know a lot of this is now actually in the cache, but, you know, we're talking a couple of bytes, this, uh, you know, a website, and it's it's really quite remarkable. And, uh, you know, a lot of people do find it irritating, especially when you come across a website where they've got a blog post and you actually have to you have to scroll down to a certain point and then there is a, a one of three or, you know, click next on, on a blog post of all things because if, if you can't fit an entire blog post onto one page, um, then you have done something incredibly wrong. Of course, there is a more... Um, sinister reason as to why they do that and that's simply to try and get you to look at more ads or to um, to garner um, art, you know to artificially inflate engagement uh, figures but um, but there we go that's sort of the the web that we live in now and and this is my act of rebellion this is my act of rebellion it is anyway this this video was supposedly about RSS feeds and actually how they're a lot easier to to code up by hand than I thought they were and they are uh, so for those of you that do have NeoCities websites, I know there are a significant number of you out there uh, and, and you guys want to possibly have an RSS feed. NeoCities does actually offer an RSS feed of sorts. It actually does send out, it does have an RSS feed that updates every time you update the website, but it doesn't necessarily give any more information other than Chris Wurz just updated his NeoCities site. So if I've updated my Game of Thrones part, that might be of very little interest to a lot of you. But if I've updated my uh, apps and uh, and and uh, apps and uh, and web services page, then then that's a whole different story. Although that being said, this is the kind of website that doesn't wholly need RSS feeds to function properly. Like, if you have a problem and you want to see if there is a free and open source software solution for it, then just visit the website as and when you require it. Put it in your bookmarks, put it in your favorites. That's, or, or just, you know, just, you can just, you could probably web search it at this point, or, um, or what, or, or just remember chrisware.neocities.org. It's right here. It's, uh, in fact, I think I even link it quite, you know, I link it around quite a lot on, on the YouTube channel and uh, and all that kind of stuff as well. Um, but really, it's, it's, it's a nice little project that I've been working on now for probably the best part, probably over a year, yeah, probably, yeah, over a year at this stage. And, um, and it's my little rebellious home on the internet. And uh, it's allowed me to learn a little bit more about coding, not only in its theory, uh, and, you know, I could code HTML, CSS, back in the days when CSS was being introduced into the web. Um, and even before then, actually, I remember when we used to just have to put HTML styling directly in the HTML documents themselves. And that was, man, that takes me back. Uh, CSS was definitely a step forward, but this absolute bombardment of JavaScript and JavaScript libraries and JavaScript frameworks and all this guys it's all too much. And these solutions end up taking as much time and effort and energy to maintain as they claim to save. And I think that that is a time when we need to step back and take a look. And this is why I like to keep things simple. And even th though it may take, a, maybe, maybe it might take a little bit longer than if you manage it through a CMS. You have a leaner website that is, you know, it's faster. Uh, it, 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 you have complete you know, control over every single element of it in terms of its, you know, specificity, in terms of its design. You can completely 100% theme it yourself. And yeah, I know a lot of these things can be achieved through CMSs, but this to me is a really straightforward, simple way of doing it where you have complete control and you can keep everything as lean as necessary. It forces you to think about, is this necessary? Or am I just putting this on on my website because other people have it on their website? Because it looks good, you know, and, and, and because it conforms to, to the uh, to the styles and the trends of the modern web and it's like well 
I don't think most people care about the styles and the trends of the modern web. I think this is some kind of ploy that cowboy marketers do to try and, you know, sell you whatever it is that they're selling, sell you the latest snake oil, when really what most people want is just the basic information. It's just, you know, a list of interesting apps and websites. It's the thing that claims to do what it says on the tin, the Ron Seal of websites. And that's what I'm trying to do here. Man, I am rambling on like a like I'm like a maniac. So anyway, that's just my thoughts on it. That's just my rant about the modern web. Um, but yeah, uh, for those of you that are thinking that maybe an RSS feed might add something to your uh, your website coded by hand, I do have to say that it really is quite straightforward. I mean, all you've got is you say you lay out the channel itself. You got uh, the title. You put in a description. You put in a link, of course, to the website itself. Uh, then you've got this. this. This I put in for the purposes of a W3C validation, and this actually just puts a URL to the RSS feed itself. And then you just add in an item with the title, the publication date, a unique ID, a link, and a description, and then close off the item tag. It really is as straightforward and as simple as that. The tutorial gives a good rundown, but yeah, you can even just use my RSS feed as an example here as well. Again, it's really just straightforward. It's very easy. Uh, and you don't need to, to get some script to you know scrape the information from your website or anything like that. It's just straightforward enough to do it by hand. And um, I'm a big fan of RSS, as you guys know. If you're wondering what my RSS reader is, I usually use the one that um, is sort of best suited to whatever desktop I'm using. If I'm using a uh, like KDE or a Qt based uh, desktop, I will probably use Aggregator. And if I'm using uh, a GTK-based desktop, then I'll be using Liferia. So um, yeah, Aggregator or Liferia, both of them are just the stock, or both of them, are, they're not necessarily the stock RSS readers for um, their toolkits in question, but they are, you know, they're the sort of the go-to RSS um, readers. And they work, you know, like an RSS reader, it's a reasonably simple piece of kit. Um, and, and I don't have too much in the way of specific requirements, just as long as it keeps me updated with RSS feeds, really. And, uh, and uh, yeah, it's, uh, it works well. So I think that's about it for my ramblings today. Thank you very much for uh, joining me. Feel free to let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below, uh, or, um, or we'll, we'll chat about them on the Discord room, because um, that's been pretty active lately as well. Links, of course, down in the description below. Uh, and I'll probably be streaming on Twitch uh, as well quite a bit going forward, although I have done as well. I, just, I don't know, if you if you guys watch Twitch streamers, then I'm on Twitch. That's, that's what I'm trying to say. Anyway, <laughs> thank you very much for watching. That's about it from me today. And until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.